right, today our topic is osmoregulation. And I want you to notice, so, you know, if we just break down that word osmo, okay, maybe that reminds you of osmosis, which was a topic that you probably remember from Biology 1408, or from maybe it's new to you, but osmosis deals directly with the movement of water across a semipermeable membrane. And so when we're talking about living things and cells, cells have these semipermeable membranes. And so we're talking about the movement of water um, and also, of course, the movement or the salt balance that it's occurring within that fluid. So the term osmoregulation is just dealing with maintaining a healthy or homeostatic water and salt balance um, in a living system. So let's have a little discussion about um, fluid compartments inside of a living system. So there are basically three different compartments where fluid is found. So the first is inside of cells. So we know that, right, that the, the cytoplasm um, inside of a cell is mostly water. Now there's going to be solutes and other things dissolved in that, but we know that that is an intra or inside the cellular fluid. Now another compartment that contains fluid is the blood plasma. So Inside of a blood vessel, right, we know there are red blood cells and there are white blood cells and platelets and other things, but the fluid in which all those are dissolved or are suspended um, exists inside of that blood vessel. So that's another compartment that contains fluid. Now the third one that you may not be as familiar with is something called interstitial fluid. And this is just the fluid that is outside of cells. So in our image to the right, all of this area, right, in blue, would represent the interstitial fluid. Now osmoregulation is going to um, involve all three of these compartments, right? A balance of the correct amount of water and solutes in all of these compartments. Now we already mentioned water, right, is a component in these um, compartments, but what else? Well, we basically have two other things that we group in these broad categories, electrolytes, and non-electrolytes. And what does that mean? Well, you're probably a little bit familiar with the term electrolyte because when you watch a Gatorade commercial, right, it lets you know that you're getting uh, electrolytes as part of that Gatorade bottle. But what is an electrolyte? Well, that is something that is, when it when you take it in or when it is in water, it dissolves into ions. So these are, if you recall way back from the type of bonding, these are bonded by ionic bonds. So examples of that would be sodium ions, calcium ions and chloride ions. As we, as we go through and learn more about individual body systems, you'll see how important these different solutes are for different functions um, within a living system. For example, calcium, which we talk about in this lesson, is important for muscle contraction, which we already also know it's very important for um, bone health, right? Um, now, non-electrolytes, Aren't, do not become ionic. They're not ions. These are things like glucose or proteins or fats or lipids that are dissolved in solution. Now let's talk about the urinary system because it is a very important piece of osmoregulation. And what does the urinary system do? Well, we'll talk more about how this works, but essentially it's going to filter the blood. In other words, it is going to, um, the, the blood is going to go through the kidney and the waste product is going to be excreted as urine, but the good components like water and glucose are going to be reabsorbed and maintained. Now, one of the things that is removed is something called nitrogenous waste. So that nitrogenous just means it contains nitrogen. Where does this nitrogenous waste come from? Well, when you take in protein as part of your diet, in your body metabolizes that or breaks down the protein, some of the waste products that are produced from that contain nitrogen, and so these are termed nitrogenous waste. So this is a normal um, waste product that's produced from your natural metabolism. Now, the other thing the urinary system does, because it helps to maintain osmotic or water-salt balance, is it helps the body maintain homeostasis, okay? Um, it regulates how much water is maintained and how much is lost. Um, it also, because it is doing that, it is maintaining healthy blood pressure. Because remember, blood pressure has to do with the amount of fluid that's in those blood vessels. So partly this is controlled by 
the urinary system. Let's take a look at some of the organs or components of the urinary system. So we'll start here with the kidney. We have right and left kidneys, okay, paired kidneys. And I want you to see that there are two vessels um, that, that carry blood. One of these vessels isn't responsible for carrying blood to the kidneys, and the other was responsible for taking blood, re returning blood back to the heart from the kidneys. And so these are the renal. So renal, right, is the term that's going to refer to kidney. So we have the renal vein and we have the renal artery. Now artery means that it's carrying blood away. So if you think artery starts with an A, away from the heart. So it's coming from the heart to the kidney. The veins are those that return blood back to the heart. So notice that they're colored red and blue. So red represents oxygenated blood. So that's coming from the heart to the kidney. The vein is then going to be carrying blood that has been filtered by the kidney back to the heart then to return to the body's blood supply. Now, other parts of this urinary system are the ureters, okay? So you see that there are a pair of ureters and what, what do these ureters do? Well, their job is to carry the urine that's produced by the kidneys to the bladder. And what is the purpose of the bladder? Well, the bladder is there to hold that urine, right? Until a time when you're ready to release it. So there's a sphincter muscle that controls the release of urine. And when that is open, the urine will travel through this other tube called the urethra to exit the body. Now on the right, what we see is a little enlarged view um, of a cross section of the kidney. And you can see a little bit, um, you can see the artery carrying blood to the kidney. You can see the vein where the blood travels from the kidney back. Now I want you to see a couple things first. We, we identify the kidney sort of as this more interior region as the medulla. And the more exterior region of the kidney then is considered the cortex. Now there is something that we will refer to as the functional unit of the kidney called the nephron. Okay, and I'm just going to put here functional unit. And what do I mean by functional unit? What I mean is this is actually what's carrying out the filtration. So there are many, many nephrons found within each kidney. And the nephron is the, is the part, right, that is carrying out the filtration. So on the next slide, we're going to look at this nephron. Okay, I want to say first, there's a lot going on <laughs> in this image. And at this point in your education, it's not important that you know every detail about how um, fluids are moving between the nephron and the blood, but I want you to have some general understanding of what this is, this nephron is doing. So let's dig in. First of all, this would represent blood coming from the renal artery. Okay. And notice that it enters into this nephron unit in a piece called the glomerular, glomerular capsule or the glomerulus. Okay, and at this point, what's happening is blood pressure is forcing a certain amount of fluid into this nephron or into the kidney. And it enters there. And then the fluid is actually going to be traveling through what we call the tubule. So you can see that's this long sort of convoluted folded process, right, that travels all the way through this tubule. And finally... At the end of this process, what we have is urine. And where is that urine going to go? Well, it's going to exit, right, the kidneys through the ureters to the bladder. But there's a reason that there's all this long tubule where the fluid travels before it exits. And what I want you to notice is all along that tubule, do you see these capillaries that exist, okay, throughout the entire process? And that's because this is where the nephron is doing its filtering, meaning not everything that entered the, the tubule or entered the nephron is all going to leave as urine. 
some of that is is good that want, that the body would like to reabsorb like water and glucose and different proteins so as it travels along this tubule there is a constant process where some things are being reabsorbed okay back into the capillaries so water glucose things like that ultimately everything that is reabsorbed back into the capillaries is going to eventually get back to the renal vein and return back to the heart and remain in the body. So what should you understand at this point about the nephron? Well, what I want you to understand is that basically blood pressure, right, is going to pour, force fluid into the glomerulus. And then this fluid is going to travel through the capsule, just, I mean, through the tubule, just like we mentioned. And when this happens, some of what originally entered the tubule is going to return back to the blood, right? It's going to diffuse back into those capillaries. So, for example, water, glucose, proteins, amino acids, those good things are going to be returned back to the capillaries. Other things, however, are going to exit as waste, like the nitrogenous waste we mentioned. Some salts, some toxins are going to continue through that tubule and eventually will become part of urine and exit through the ureter. Now, let's look at the overall system one more time. So, once the filtration has occurred in the nephrons, all of the nephrons then will send the urine through a collecting duct and eventually it will enter, oh, excuse me, exit through the ureter and travel to the bladder to be stored. Now, one thing I want to mention, if you have ever known anyone who had to go to kidney dialysis, or maybe you know a little bit about kidney dialysis, what that means is if the kidneys are not functioning correctly or they're not functioning at the, functioning at the capacity that they need to to filter all the blood, then dialysis is essentially an artificial process that is doing exactly what we walk through with the nephron. The blood is being filtered so the components that need to be retained, like water and glucose, are retained in the blood, but those toxins like the nitrogenous waste and other things are then um, filtered out and taken out of the blood. So dialysis is just an artificial process that mimics what's going on inside the kidney. So that's all we have for today. I hope that was helpful.